Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Keeping Calm with Counselors YouTube channel. Today, Mrs. Gag and I are going to continue on teaching you guys two new tools from Toolbox. Hello, I hope everyone is doing fine. All right, here we go. Okay, Mrs. Gag, would you like to introduce some of our tools that we've already worked on? Okay, yes. So um, we have worked on the breathing tool. That's the first one I think that we did. And remember, we go like this to take a breath in, and then we come like this back, and then we do this. And that is supposed to be a tape measure that's being pulled out, and then breathe out, and then breathe in. Breathe out, and we can use that tool for so many things. And I'm thinking I have experienced a lot of frustration since school has been out. And for me, it's like when I get frustrated, I need to stop and breathe deeply and use that tool. Definitely, I agree. I love the breathing tool. I think it's one of the tools that most of our students are all using right now. We can all teach our families too. Yeah, so let me um, review another tool. Um, one more tool here, um, quiet safe place tools. So I remember my quiet safe place and this is um, our hand motion. And it just means that we can give ourselves the privilege of taking space and finding a nice quiet place to take space. And sometimes that's hard if we're all home and there's you know a lot of adults in the house, but now the weather's getting nice. It could be your front porch, it could be your backyard, it could be the corner of the living room, uh, it could be the kitchen um, when no meals are being made. So um, we all have the right to have a quiet, safe, place where we can reflect and think about things. Okay. Great. Another tool that we've learned about everyone is our listening tool. Remember our hand gestures for that one is you're going to put your hand behind your ear like this. And this tool is about not only listening with our ears as we've done in the hand gesture, but also listening with our eyes and our heart. Mm -hmm. So that can mean sometimes we audibly might hear certain people talking to us. You might hear your brother or sister telling you something really important. But sometimes we might hear them with our ears, but we're not really listening with our eyes and our heart. That means that we could be maybe looking behind them as they're talking or even looking at our phones or looking at something that's around us. And we want to make sure that we're also listening with our heart by understanding what they're saying and not thinking of what we're gonna say next, which I think is sometimes really hard to do because we might listen and we might say, well, okay, when they're finished, I can finally say what I wanna say, but sometimes it's okay to put that on the back burner and say, hey, I'm gonna give you my full attention right now, and I'm not only gonna listen with my ears, but I'm gonna listen with my eyes and my heart because I respect you, whoever that person is that's speaking to us. I find when I have to really listen, it means that I have to give my full attention and I have to concentrate on what that person's saying and how they're saying it and their body language mm -hmm. so that I can really understand them. Definitely. All right, another great tool that we've learned about is our empathy tool. You guys remember this one? We put our hands out like this and it's kind of like we're balancing maybe our emotions, our friends' emotions, and that slogan for this one is, I care for myself and I care for others. So if you guys remember when we talked about this in the classroom setting, we used a lot of different examples of empathy, but really that's kind of like putting yourself in the other person's shoes. You might've heard someone say that before. And you might say, I don't even know what that means. I don't wear the same shoe size as you. I could never. And of course we know you probably don't, but the idea is maybe, hey, imagine if, I was that person, how would they feel? Hmm, I'm gonna think about that. And what if I was to be in that person's shoes? How would I feel if that happened to me? So that's kind of the idea with empathy. Okay. I find with the empathy tool, 
um, that you really have to listen. And, mm -hmm. and that's that part of listening with your heart where you're really trying to understand how that person feels. Definitely. All right, here we go. Another one we recently learned, if you missed it, it's okay. You can still watch this one through the YouTube video on our channel, but it's the personal space tool. And the slogan for that one is, I have a right to my space and so do you. And I think Mrs. Gag, this is a pretty interesting and cool tool because of our times right now of personal yeah. space mm -hmm. and how we have to give each other our personal space right now due to the epidemic of the coronavirus going on unfortunately right now but i think regardless of what's happening currently we still need to understand and respect other people's personal space yeah well and it's really important because right now we're hearing from the governor that we have to take personal space yep. and that's not necessarily with our um with our family although even when you are with your family you do need to have some personal space definitely so the next tool is using our words tool mm -hmm. and this means that i'm going to use the right words at the right time in the right way and for the right reason so i might have to say to someone you know um something that you just said um bothered me and i'd like to just stop right here and let you know about that and that might be hard but that would be me using my words rather than just letting it just go by or using the right words would be oh i really appreciate you doing that for me and i just want to thank you so much it means so much to me that you thought of me and that you really listened to what I was saying. So those are, those are examples of using our words. Great. Um, what's next? The garbage can yeah. tool. Oh gosh, this one is a favorite. And I think it's a great tool to use, especially right now when we're at home, maybe with our siblings and our family members. So remember the slogan for our garbage can tool is, I let the little things go. And our hand motion is like this, putting those things in the, in the garbage can. Yeah, and once it's in the garbage can, I don't think we wanna go ahead and take it back out. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. So little things, these can be small things. For example, you could be at home. Maybe you're watching this video in your room right now or in your living room, and you might have a sibling who's in the back speaking really loud. And you might just say, oh gosh, can you like lower your voice a little bit? And what if that sibling wants to start an argument with you right in that moment? And you're kind of like, maybe you need to use your breathing tool. Say, I don't want to argue with this person, but this is a little thing. I don't want it to go too far, but I'm just going to tell my sibling, hey, I'm trying to focus on this video right now. And I'm going to let this go because if, imagine if I actually was to get really upset and maybe wanted to start arguing back with them, it wouldn't be a very good outcome. So that's a small thing that we can say, hey, I'm gonna let that go. I'm just gonna say, you know what, hey, can you quiet it down? If they wanna start an argument, I'm just gonna maybe just ignore them for that moment and focus on what I'm doing and let those little things go. And that happens a lot. I even have to let little things go. Mm -hmm. Even, believe it yeah. or not, with my son sometimes, he'll do things, a little toddler, two-year-old, and I might say, oh gosh, but I'll let the little things go, and I'll just keep having a good day, because if we carry these things with us, it can actually sometimes ruin our day, or make us even more upset. And then it's and not good for our health. It's exactly. not good for our health. Yeah. Exactly. Very good. So, okay. I love that tool. I love the idea of choosing what mm. i want to focus on Definitely. and if i don't choose and i let everything bother me then i have a rotten day and i'm not very nice to people yeah and we hate that and other others don't want to be around us mm -mm. no yeah. pick and choose pick and choose definitely love yeah. it okay guys so today we're learning cool. two new tools which are actually the next two that are on our list here which are going to be the taking time tool and the please and thank you tool. Okay. Okay, great.
All right. Well, so um, the <clears throat> taking time tool, um, a watch reminds us that the taking time tool is important to pause and go inward or to pause and gain distance and perspective. The hand gesture is to, temp is to gently tap your wrist like you're pointing to a watch with your index finger. So um, again, it's about that uh, being able to help yourself reflect on something. So a lot of what we're talking about with all these tools is the ability to control our emotions and our behaviors. And so when we take time to think about something, it means that we're going to reflect on that and maybe make some decisions about it rather than just reacting. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think that that's definitely a tool that with all of our tools, it takes time. It's not something yeah. that tonight you'll be perfect at it or even tomorrow, but it definitely takes those baby steps of us saying, I'm going to try to use this tool to the best mm -hmm. of my ability. And I know I might fail, but at least I'm going to try and I'm going to continue to try to work on these tools, especially with the take, taking time tool. And Mrs. Gag and I can talk next about some examples maybe and you might say, hmm, I've actually been in that situation and maybe I didn't use my taking time tool and this is what it would actually look like if we did. Okay. So the taking time tool promotes the idea of self-control as Mrs. Gegg was just saying. It's all about that self-control, that self-regulation, which is what really all of our tools are teaching us. And it requires us to kind of take a step back take that, that deep breath and to chill out and kind of realize that, hey, I might need a moment here. And we'll talk about, there's kind of a two, there's kind of two tools within the taking time tool, I would say. Mm -hmm. Two parts, I should say, actually. Um, and they both in, involve a choice that you can make, whether or not you wanna take the time in, or we'll talk about taking that time away. And this is a great tool to use, whether it be in a conflict situation, or maybe it's a situation where you're very upset or you're really angry. And a lot of the time we might not know what to do with our anger. So what that means, if we don't know how to control it, it kind of takes over and does its own thing. So the great thing about this particular tool is we're learning how to take control, how to take that responsibility of our emotions and our feelings to say, hey, I know what to do with how I'm feeling right now. Yeah, I like to think of the taking time tool as a time that we give ourselves because sometimes we just try to crowd everything mm. into a day or an hour yeah. and then being able to really think about something. So um, I think of electronics and people being on electronics all the time yeah. and, and responding to texts and doing those kinds of things and maybe not taking some time away to really reflect. And let's say, let's say you wanted to set a goal for yourself and maybe the goal would be that you are going to um, go outside, spend some time outside and help your family with some gardening and some outdoor jobs. Yeah. But you don't really know how to do that. And sometimes the only way to figure out how to start something new and different is to sort of sit down and really think about it. So mm -hmm. if we don't give ourselves the time to really think, and we're human, we have these great brains, but we need to have the time, then we can't do things that are different, N new things and difficult things and challenging things. Those things mean that we have to use our brain to sort mm -hmm. of... Definitely. I love that example, Mrs. Gag. And well, it's a perfect segue here. I'm going to move us down so we can all read this here. Okay. There we go. Okay. Is so, yeah. In, in part, Mrs. Gag, if you can explain this one, you did super good at that example. Mm hmm. So, taking time in and taking time away. And I think of that taking time in means having that time to really reflect on something. And um, in order for us to be our best, the best that we can be, you know, be the best person to ourselves, be the best friend, be the best daughter or son, is to really reflect sometimes on our behavior. So we need to take time in, 
to just look inside of ourselves and maybe figure out why we're doing something that we kind of don't like ourselves doing, you know? So that's time in is really time for us to reflect. Definitely. I think a good example with time in might Mm -hmm. also be if we are in maybe a conversation with someone that maybe we don't, it's a hard conversation we're having. Mm -hmm. And it might be difficult and it kind of goes back to a couple of our other tools that we mentioned, but it's a time for us to take some time in of self-reflection of maybe what we want to say next. And that might be difficult to even say, and Mm -hmm. we might need to take some time to say, I'm really upset right now. And this is a difficult conversation that I'm having. So I think I need to take a moment just to use my breathing tool to kind of self-reflect on what I'm going to say next and prepare myself, take that time in to think mm-hmm. about maybe what did I do? What should I have done in that situation? And then come back and we're able to kind of say, hey, I've taken that moment to think about it and now I'm ready to continue on with the conversation. Yeah, that would be a great way to take time away, correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. sometimes that does involve us being able to physically remove or distance our, ourselves from the heat of a conflict. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, you know, I'm feeling kind of upset now. I think I'm just going to go get a glass of water and step outside and get some fresh air. Mm -hmm. And that gives me some perspective because sometimes when we're in a difficult conversation with someone and our feelings are all stirring up, we don't have that perspective. So when we get ourselves out of that situation and just kind of take care of our, it's kind of a way of taking care of ourselves. We can come back and be less angry, less confused, and really use the right words. Definitely. I think an example for me is that that I actually had to use this tool. I think this was about maybe two days ago now. Mm -hmm. Um, I was speaking with my mom actually, and there was just a miscommunication about something which happened. And the conversation turned into something where I needed, I knew, we all know ourselves and everyone is different, but I knew for me, I said, I need to take a moment to calm myself down and actually take time away. So I physically had to remove myself and just tell my mom, okay, mom, I I wanna finish this conversation, but if you don't mind, I just wanna take a step outside. I just need to gather my thoughts, take a couple deep breaths and we can come back. And she said, okay. And that allowed me to physically remove myself just to take a deep breath, Mm -hmm. down it's really good too sometimes if we have the opportunity to step outside and get that fresh air um you know when you're in a room or in a house or something but as soon as you walk out and you feel that breeze on your face it gives you this just awakening I felt like and a renewing Mm -hmm. of your mind and that really helped me by using this tool to take some time away for that time collect my thoughts. And then I came back in and said, okay, mom, I'm ready to continue our conversation. And it was actually a really positive and good conversation by allowing me to take that time away for those couple minutes. Yeah. And she may have needed that time too, Exactly. but she maybe didn't recognize that in herself. So Mm -hmm. it probably, I mean, it can really help a difficult situation to take that time away. And that's why if we are texting someone and we're on some kind of platform where we're doing some social media and someone says something and we just take offense and then someone says something else, things can get way out of hand. Yeah. So, you know, we need to step away and say, you know, I'm going to leave this conversation for a while and get some perspective. Perfect. I think that's a good example, especially with social media and maybe not having that face-to-face time with our friends right now, some of our students and some of our friends might say some mean things online that happens a lot of the times we might need to delete that app for a moment take some time away from our phones put it down and just walk away yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so i think we can all see how a lot of these tools kind of work together yes definitely yeah Mm -hmm. okay moving on to our second tool of the day it is the please and thank you tool And Mm -hmm. our slogan for this one is, I treat others with kindness and appreciation, okay? And our hand gestures, this is a kind of funny picture I found here of a key with little glasses on there and those eyes. Mm -hmm. And our hand gesture for this one is we're gonna hold as active if we're holding a physical key and we're just gonna kind of like turn our wrist, like an imaginary lock 
like we need to actually unlock a door, for example. Okay. And the idea so that why yeah, why do we call it a key? What's the key? Okay. So that idea of using a key, we might say, how does a key and please and thank you, how are those um, you know, correlated with one another? So our idea is that the key, we're using a key because it's a magic word. The magic words are please and thank you. And they kind of open up this door of communication. So it's kind of like this idea of the key, we're opening a door. Once we're unlocking that, it's opening us to have that open communication with others. And I think, Mrs. Gegg, this is a super good tool because sometimes some of us are taught at home how to yep. say please, how to say thank you. And some of us may have not been taught that growing up. Mm -hmm. And it really makes a difference. I really miss how I feel about someone when they do say please or thank you or I really appreciate that or thank you for your time or this made me feel a lot better. It's just, it's a way of expressing our gratitude. And so we express our gratitude and someone receives that gratitude and it just makes things work better between people. Definitely. I think yeah. we can all think of different examples maybe of even mm -hmm. recently being at home and being maybe stuck in the house with that mm -hmm. brother or that sister or a mom or a dad. And it might be yeah. a little bit like, oh my gosh, when is this going to end? So we can go around other people. But the reality is that we can accept where we are right now and be thankful for being mm -hmm. with our families, being safe with our families. But also I think the police part is really important too because sometimes we get kind of comfortable and we get yeah. used to just doing whatever with our family in these moments. We might just grab certain things or just kind of have this flow of doing things. But I think that if we put into perspective of, hey, thank you, mom. Or, hey, can I please have that to your sister or brother? It can make a huge difference. Yeah, rather than say, oh, would you just grab that for me? Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, it's like, it sounds so much nicer if you say, would you mind um, giving me that? I would really appreciate it. Or would you please give me that? Um, mm -hmm. Or would you please get that for me? And then, oh, thank you. That was really helpful. Using yeah. those kind words just kind of makes our relationships mm -hmm. work better. Yeah. And you're right, Mrs. Mori, not everyone has learned that. Mm -hmm. And so it is some, it's sometimes it can be a skill that because it doesn't come naturally, you just have to start using those words more. And that can really, I think you'll be able to really see the difference in other people's reactions too. Definitely. That's what I was going to say is that I think when we we say it for ourselves because it makes us feel good too. But if we think about the reaction from the other person on their end, how they're mm -hmm. feeling, when we just say those two simple words that we hear a lot, we might hear people say please or thank you. And sometimes we forget to say it ourselves. But if you really kind of have that self reflection piece to say, hey, how do I feel when someone actually says please to yeah. me or thank you to me? Yeah, yeah. I really, um, and, and especially during this time, mm -hmm. I'm really aware of people who are working in stores yes. or takeout restaurants. And I'm always, you know, I always just want to say, oh, thank you. You know, you really helped me with those groceries. I appreciate it. Or thank you. This food looks great, you know, and I appreciate everything that you're doing for people. Yeah. So, you know. Yes. That's really helpful. It makes people feel good. Definitely. All right, guys. So our last thing is we're going to watch a quick YouTube video. It's very funny, I thought, and a little cute and cool just to watch this situation go on between these two animals here, and then we'll kind of come back and talk about it. So... <laughs> Oh, that looks yummy! What is it? Cucumber cream cheese sandwich! Hey, I would love some too! Give me some now! What is it that you are drinking? Strawberry milkshake! I want some too! 
I can't believe how rude you can be, Coley. I am being rude. What about your manners, Bumbly? <laughs> what do you mean? You are my friend, Coley. You are supposed to share things with me. If you want your friends to be nice to you, you need to be nice to them too. People would not want to be around you or do nice things for you if you are rude to them, Bumbly. How is one supposed to be nice to someone? You can always add a please when you ask for something and say thank you when you receive something. Oh, that was it. It is not that hard to be nice then. Can you please give me some of that sandwich? <laughs> that was pretty funny. All right. That's our next tool. We don't want to share that one just yet. Next time. Yes, next time. Okay, guys, so those are our two tools for today. And Mrs. Mori, it was great to see you. Yes, you as well, Mrs. Gag. So stay safe, everyone. Stay safe, Mrs. Gag. And we will see you guys in a couple weeks with another toolbox video. Okay, take care of yourselves and your families. All right. Very cool. And